What's up, gangsters? It is mid-November 2021, and it's been a minute since I did one of these uh, 3D printing adventure episodes. A few things have happened, uh, so let's just get into it. Okay, so yeah, this is bad. Why is this bad? This looks pretty normal from this view, right? Well, so the deal is uh, today is about three weeks from the last time I printed. Um, it is the 5th of November right now, and uh, I came in uh, a couple of days ago and tried to run a print, and it was totes fail. And I initially thought that it was just a, you know, standard failure to stick to the build plate, but no. Because um, after I did that, I ran my VAT cleaning coupon, which is just a, uh, a rectangle uh, that I expose uh, you know, like 10 layers um, to, you know, collect any trash in the bottom of the vat that you can then peel out. And when I went to peel it out, there was nothing in there. And that's when I realized this was not what I thought it was. So first thing I did was pull the vat out and ran a test, ran a, you know, did a, uh, did a print just to see, uh, just to check the LCD. And, uh, there was nothing. Well, there was something, but what it was, was the LCD was a complete rectangle of about half bright resolution. And I knew that wasn't right because it didn't look anything like what was on the display screen. So I thought, well, I'll just cycle, I'll just power cycle it, see if that fixes it. So turned it off, turned it back on, and problems got worse because the display, dead. Did that a few times. So you can see like, well, maybe if I can do it without getting my finger uh, in front of the camera lens. Maybe, yeah, probably not. Maybe, we'll see. Anyway, so if we go over here and turn the power off, you can see power is in fact off. And I come back around here and turn the power back on. Now, the only thing, you can see this little red light back here that came on on the uh, optical position sensor. That, well, that's how I know I got juice, but yeah, no display, nothing else. So that's bad. So the good news though is that I uh, uh, emailed or I called EPAX yesterday, uh, left a message, tried this morning, nothing. So I just emailed my sales rep, Abby, She's super cool, and I just asked her if she could have somebody call me, and about five minutes later, I got Dan on the phone calling me to ask what's up, and we walked through it, and he was like, yep, not good, um, and he wanted me to take the thing apart and see you know, if we could diagnose some things, and I was like, look, Dan, dude, I am not, uh, you know, I'm, I'm more than mechanically inclined enough to do what you're asking me to, but my dexterity, because of my hands, not so good, and I just don't really want to spend the time and energy taking this thing apart. Um, and he immediately agreed to just uh, send me a brand new machine, uh, let me put this one in the box, and return it to him. Fortunately, they had one in their warehouse that they could send to me because he said right now they've got uh, most of their inventory is stuck on container ships that are just sitting outside the port of Los Angeles and have been for two months, so that's bad. But anyway, super cool of uh, those guys to just you know step right up and help me get this taken care of and get back running again. Um, the other thing, this is kind of cool, I thought, a little idea to try and minimize the mess. Just picked up this inexpensive uh, soap dish from Amazon, and it makes a nice little drain rack for the build plate into my disposable plastic food containers. So, you know, I could wash them out or throw them away. Okay, so I got a bunch of parts here and these are all parts off of the new replacement machine that I ran over the weekend and it performed perfectly every time. And part of the reason was because I finally got, I think, maybe, I mean, I hate to be, you know, certain about it, but I feel like maybe I've finally gotten squared away on my settings for printing at 10 microns. 10 microns has been my target for quite a while because it really is what you need for 
uh, really finely detailed scale modeling parts. Um, and I just was struggling to get stuff to stick to the build plate. And I was using the same burn-in layer settings that I've been using on 0.2 and 0.3 layer height builds. But for whatever reason, at point one, uh, uh, did I say point 0.1? Anyway, I, I got to start using consistent terminology. I was using the same layer burn-in layer settings as I was on 20 and 30 micron layer builds. But for whatever reason, at 10 microns, didn't want to stick. And so I talked to Tom Annis. Uh, he's a master of 10 micron builds because of all of the stuff that he runs. And he's using a different machine. He's using a, a, a Frozen. But he runs a lot of stuff at uh, 10 microns because he builds a lot of scale modeling parts. That's his business. So uh, when I looked at his settings, he was doing his burn-in layers at 60 seconds. And I think he does not have a mono screen. So I was like, all right, well, let me try... Uh, 40 and it worked perfectly the default for epax hard black is 25 and I had only gone as high as 30 with this uh, any cubic gray uh, Craftsman and it just wasn't enough 40 seems to have done the trick the uh, The uh, rafts are still a little bit thick uh, But I don't care about that as long as everything else that happens is in the right spot. It's all good and all three of these prints came off uh, successfully, uh, pretty much as perfectly as, as I could expect. Um, so this one was this one was done at at point three, and I will look at it in a second. But look at these parts; the detail on these is phenomenal. These are one forty eighth scale wheels and tires for the Tamiya F fourteen Tomcat kit that Tom is building. These wheels and tires. Um, are his files that I got from him. I wanted to see how well they printed for me. And look at that. Just phenomenal level of resolution. I'm pretty sure that those tiniest little cylinders are 0.2 millimeter diameter. I mean, they are dinky and they just printed perfectly. Just really, really good. There's a little bit of a flaw. If you look up here at the 12 o'clock position on this wheel, it did not print all of those little insets down in that lowest part. It's kind of filled in right there. So I printed another one the same way just to see if it did it twice. And here's what I suspect is that it's not a file problem or a print problem. I think it's resin that pooled in there and never drained out or got washed out and that then cured. Um, I don't know. But that's not a, I mean, I, yeah, I'd try to fix it if I were using that on a kit, but I, I think that's probably what's going on there. But look at these tires, okay? And this is pretty neat to look at. Um, these logos uh, stick out like 0.1 millimeters. And so look at, Look at how beautifully they printed. Look at the resolution on those. Just really fantastic. Now, I felt like when I compared these to pictures of Tom's prints, and he printed in the same orientation, that his logos looked like they were sticking up a little more proudly, a little easier to see. And so I'm not sure what's up with that. Um, I think if, if I were going to design these parts for myself, that I would make those big logos protrude maybe twice as far. I mean, this is not bad though. You know, because you put some paint on there, you do a little dry brushing, those logos will stand out really well. But here's what's interesting. Look at this version. So I printed this one vertically, obviously, and look at the difference in the resolution of the logos, how much they protrude. You can see that it is it is noticeably different. But look at what else you get with this one, okay? Look at the artifacts on the sidewalls there, okay? So you would expect maybe to see some build layer lines with it laid over flat like this, but there's none. And that's that 10 micron layer height working for you. There's some in there, but you can just barely, barely see them. 
Like you might not even be able to see them at all. I don't know, but they're there. I can see them under a magnifier, but you can barely see them. Whereas with this, you can see them quite a bit. And, and so here's the difference. What you're seeing here is masking artifacts. If it'll focus. Those are masking artifacts. They look like layer lines, but obviously they're not because it's standing up vertically. And what those are is masking artifacts and you're seeing the fact that even at 31 microns, and this EPAX X14K being the highest resolution that's currently available for these printers, at 31 microns on each side, the pixel dimensions are basically three times larger than the layer thickness is at, at 10 microns on this build. So, you know, again, orientation is always important, but I think you can see that there is no rule that's going to, uh, you know, get you the perfect orientation every time. You know, people say, oh, you got to build at an angle. Well, you wouldn't want to have built these at an angle because you'd have build layer lines across that flat surface right there for one. Now, on this right here, you can see I built this wheel. This is mine for um, my uh, one of my projects, and I built it standing up and got really nice results. Kind of hard to see, but there you go. Got really pretty nice results. Flip it over, and you can see, because I don't have any tire logos, and my, and my uh, sidewall profile is different. So there is a defect there at the bottom, but that is something else going on there. That was on a couple of the parts in the print. Just uh, didn't show up as much as it did here. But you can see the detail on the wheel is perfect for the most part, other than that, that issue. And because of the difference in the shape of my sidewall profile, I don't get those masking artifacts. So for this one, vertical is the right way to go. You also notice on this and on the landing gear that I'll show you here in a second, taking some lessons from my prior builds, I put little bitty support out there at the end of that hexagonal axle nut thing and that that helped that come out a lot better and I did the same sort of thing on uh, these parts landing gear parts where I had some little stubs sticking out there including the axle and uh, I haven't checked the fit on these yet but I'm gonna do that here directly um, these are linkages that go with the landing gear little bitty tiny parts and we'll see how they fit um, but yeah they printed about as good as you could expect so anyway it's all good stuff okay so there you go i feel like that episode was a little bit all over the place a little bit disjointed a uh, bit long-winded there about tolerances but you know it is what it is um i uh you know the main thing that i want to come through is that i am really uh, stoked uh, in spite of what happened with my printer, my first one, uh, because, uh, I mean, look, yeah, you can say that that stuff shouldn't happen, but the bottom line is that all of these printers are, honestly, they're, they're, they're made out of cheap parts, and I don't say that to be mean. That's just kind of the reality of it. You know, they're just really super simple machines, and Pretty much all the parts in them are commodities. You know, lead screws, um, the the rails may be custom, probably off the shelf. Um, the, you know, the screens, um, the power supplies, all that stuff is just really commodity stuff. I mean, kind of the only thing that's special about any of them is the enclosures. And so, one of the reasons that I chose Epax was because I kind of felt like, okay, look, if all of these machines are sort of junky. Um, and, you know, you see a lot of quality issues with the other brands, Anycubic, uh, Frozen, all of them, uh, you know, there are machine quality issues. I, I kind of felt like, all right, uh, number one, Epax does have a better reputation for quality, but number two, they're right here in the United States. I can potentially get them on the phone. So if there's any likelihood that I'm going to have failures because of sort of inevitable machine quality issues... I want to do business with the company that's going to provide the best service. 
and EPAX came through big time on this deal. Um, you know, it, it, it was literally, so the machine quit uh, on a Monday. I was on the phone with them by Wednesday, and I had a new machine sitting here on my floor uh, a week later. Um, it's it, it, And I ran it this, this weekend. So, you know, from the time that it broke until the time I was running again was 10 days. And, you know, four of those days were just because I didn't get around to doing anything with it. But they were fantastic. Um, not only were they great to deal with on the phone, uh, you know, they got the machine out of inventory, checked it for me before they sent it. Um, I, I, you know, again, lucky because... Uh, as they told me, most of their inventory is stuck on container ships uh, off the port of Los Angeles. So I was just lucky that they had one in stock and, and, and just really grateful that they got it out to me so quickly. They sent me a you know a prepaid shipping label to uh, send the other one back. Just all around a great customer service experience. And this is how you win customers for life. So super, super happy about that. Anyway, that's enough of my blabbing. Um, I don't know what's coming in the next episode or when it'll be, but we'll see you then. As always, I appreciate you watching. Much love.